This is part two of the two-part series on upgrading to version 3.1 of the Virtual Identity Server. In this uh, section, I'm now going to show you how to do a, kinda, a common use case uh, for using VIS and the new Viz Admin profiles. In this example, I'm going to set it up and configure VIS so that some, some, some users uh, connecting through VIS will have read access to Active Directory and some users that connect will have read and write access uh, to uh, Active Directory. Of course, this could be to any backend data store, uh, database, however you want to configure it. So what I've done is I've actually taken a given OU structure within uh, Active Directory, um, and I've created it so that in permissions within Active Directory, uh, certain users have read access and certain people have update rights. So looking at this connection here that I have directly to Active Directory with write user 1, you'll notice that in this OU perm test for permissions test, if I go to a given user here and type the title and attempt to edit it, I am able to. Now, conversely, if I go to this Active Directory connection that is set to read user, and I go to the perm test and I try and update that same attribute title, we'll get an error insufficient access. So that's Active Directory surfacing that error 50 insufficient access. So what I did was I configured uh, AD using delegate control uh, the features within Active Directory. I'm not going to cover that. Your AD administrator can do that. I configured it so that this user here, write user 1, the actual users uh, that exist, um, and actually the users exist themselves down here in either a read OU uh, for the read users or a write OU for the people that have write update writes into Active Directory. So I configured that within Active Directory itself, not within VIS. But we're now going to use those users uh, within VIS at, to set those bind profiles within, Act, uh, within VIS. So let's go ahead and configure that and see how we would do that and go about it. So the first thing we need to do is create those other bind profiles. Um, you could of course do it another way, but this is this is the way I'm going to do it. Is I'm going to first I have this AD admin rights, and I have that set for connecting to Active Directory as an administrator account. So now I'm going to create another bind profile, and I'm going to call this read bind profile. This bind profile is going to have read access into Active Directory. So that user is called read user one. I'm going to set the password and do a test bind. That was successful. Test permissions successful. So now I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now I'm going to create one more bind profile here. This is going to be the right bind profile. And this is again forest one backslash right user one. That's that user identity that I gave permissions in Active Directory to have right access update rights in a given OU. So just kind of showing the flexibility. So depending upon who connects into VIS, they'll have read or write access. So that's the first part. The next part we're going to have to do is create some other admin groups here and tie them to the bind profiles. So what I did was ahead of time here, just to save a little time in the video, I created two uh, dynamic groups. So again, virtual static groups or dynamic groups or real AD group can be used in the viz admins. So I created this group, and I basically said object category equals person, and if the OU search base, I just use the search base of read OU, anybody in the read OU container is going to be in this group for VIS read users. So you can see we've got read user 1, read user 2, same kind of thing over here on the write users. So we've got our two groups, and I'll just do a view dynamic, write user 1, write user 2. Perfect. Now what we need to do is get the distinguished name for uh, that to be able to cut and paste. So make it nice and easy, drill down into the OU equals optimal IDM, go into your dynamic groups, and here is that user. I'm going to go and copy that. Actually, I did a cut, but I'm not going to copy it. Now, let's create a viz admin group. I'm going to paste that DN right here, right, because it's a virtual DN that we need with the DCVIS equals net, DC equals net. And I'm going to call this um, viz, uh, viz read admin group, or just viz read group. All right. So that is set, 
and now let's go ahead and associate uh, a bind profile to that. So for anybody in that, I'm going to set the AD and I'm going to give it the read bind profiles. So this is the um, read AD. And now I need one more so that these people also uh, read viz config. And set that. So we have an AD one. So for the viz read group, which is this dynamic group, viz read users, there's two associated bind profiles. The read AD, which gives them read access, right? This is the read bind profile into AD, gives them read access, and then also to the viz config. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and create one more. Create viz admin group. This is going to be the write admin group. Same thing, we're going to go get that DN, so we're going to go to the virtual dynamic group write users. Oh, I might have messed up on that other one. I might have grabbed the write users. We're going to have to go double check that. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's go back up to the read group. Nope, I had that right. This is the read users, and then this is the write users. So just taking a look at this group name here just to make sure that I had that set right. But I did. So now for the write admin users, I'm going to go again associate bind profiles, and I'm going to do the write bind profile and uh, this config. That's fine actually for that. And we have that. Now one more and right. We'll do this one for the AD. And we're for AD. We're going to give it the right bind profile. So that's that. So uh, this is a uh, right. We probably should give it a better name. I should probably give it right viz config. Just so it's a little bit more descriptive. So for our Right admin groups, this is the right users. They have two associated buying profiles. One is to the viz config, and one is to the AD with write privileges. And then on our read group, read users, again, read into AD and the viz config. Perfect. We still have our AD administrators over here. Anybody in the domain admin still has full access into it. Um, we created our given bind profiles down here. Uh, that we associated, so we should be good to go. I'm going to do a save XML, and we are going to do a restart on VIS. So come back up here, restart. Uh, should go to stop, go to gears here, and it'll do a restart. So now I also created some of these other connections in LDAP Manager using that read user 1, read user writes. We should no longer get that LDAP error 50 anymore from VIS. Uh, we should be able to read, right? So let's first just check our uh, admin one. Great. He can still uh, view and see everything in Viz. Uh, perfect. Now let's go see uh, through VIS connecting, you can see here, with read user 1, right? Okay, we didn't get the error 50, which is good, because now we have a group that gives access. Before, we just had that domain admins group. Now we have that dynamic group. So VIS, check to see if the bind user I was connecting with, read user 1, was a member of that dynamic group, read users, which it was. So I have search capabilities. Now, we're connecting down as, actually, read user 1, oddly enough, on the back end from VIS, right, in the configuration. If we try and connect here with perm test um, to the one of the users here, rather, and we attempt to do an update, we get the insufficient access, which is the expected result. Because that user that VIS is connecting with, not the user we're actually connecting to, to Viz with, but the account that VIS was connecting to AD does not have access. Now, let's take a look at this, which is from Viz. Uh, with the right user one. So this is connecting to VIS with right user one, which is actually the same account that we had uh, connecting to AD. Now, if we go down to this perm test, 
attempt to do the update, this update should be successful. So let's set this to AAA, and it was. Perfect. Everything's working as normal. Now, remember, this. Uh, if we look at this configuration for what we were connecting to AD with, um, we were connecting here as write user 1. Now, we can also, so this is what we're connecting to AD in the back end, and it is also, in this particular case, what we're connecting to on the front end with uh, VIS. But let's go ahead and, uh, and expand upon this and take the write user 1. We'll make a copy of it. It made a copy. Let's change this to write user 2. It has the same password. We're going to call this write user 2. So we're going to connect to VIS with write user 2. But of course, the activity that's going to happen on the back end of AD is going to go under the account of write user 1. Just showing that the vizadmin group is working properly with a different user account here. So let's go ahead and do save. Um, and come back to the tree view. Yes, things have changed. Okay, news, we can connect and bind through write user 2. Now let's go to this perm test. So we're actually going to try and do an update through VIS. We're going to go to the title field again. Let's change it to LLL. And we were. Now, perfect. So everything's working beautifully. Our dynamic group that we had configured in here uh, is working. We're using this. It saw either of these two users uh, that had access here, write user 1 or write user 2. And then the change was actually uh, reflected and was made by this user. But our viz admin groups are working perfectly. So this kind of shows you the flexibility that you can do with these admins groups now to set and, and very much give you know a read-only view of your directory to this subset of users and a read-write to another subset. And again, these viz admins groups can be real groups in AD that you may have. They can be dynamic groups as well, like I showed here and demonstrated here. Um, just shows the flexibility uh, of some extra security that you can now add within VIS. Um, and relatively easy. We do this in just a few minutes. Um, any questions, please feel free to email us at support at optimalidm.com. Easy for me to say. And uh, more videos are on the way uh, showing you how to do some of these configurations to uh, expand the use of your virtual directory within your environment. And again, we thank you for being uh, valued customers of Optimal IDM.